Hello again, this time we're going to look at the British Army Jungle Survival Knife as it is known. Now I believe this one to have been made by J Adams of Sheffield as it has J.A. stamped into the handle here. I can't remember though because I bought this knife about five years ago and it's all very well and good looking at Heine but from what I remember when I bought it from Heine it was actually listed as one name but the 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 name on the knife was actually different I think when I bought it it said John Noel I'm probably saying that wrong but this is a, a, a J Adams they're the exact same knife they're both made in Sheffield by fairly well known Sheffield knife makers so I'm not really fussed to be honest um, so as I said I bought this about four or five years ago used that a little bit here and there I think at the at the time I paid about 50 or 60 I believe and I cannot believe how much these have gone up in price in fact as the case with a lot of a lot of knives I've noticed I think these now in some cases run from about 80 pounds to about 110 and sometimes even higher which is absolute madness that the prices went up that much um, another knife that I've noticed that really has gone up in price maybe it's just my imagination but I swear it's gone up in price um, is the is the buck um, lockback knives the, the 112 folding hunter that I just cannot shut up about um, yeah that's, an, that's another one I'm sure I paid about £50 for that knife and it's gone up to about 70 or 80 and some websites are selling it for as much as 100 which is just pure madness Anyway, this knife. I don't think I've done a video of this knife specifically. I did do a video two years ago titled British Army Knives, which is a fairly straightforward, simple and boring title, I thought. But for God knows what reason, that's my most viewed video to date. And my God, I cannot believe the amount of views that's got. That's topped 60,000 views, which in the grand scheme of YouTube, I know that's pretty much nothing. But most of my videos only get a couple of hundred vid, uh, views. In fact, some of them um, get two figure views. So the fact that that, that video has got so many views and likes and comments is, is actually quite amazing to me. So cheers to everyone that's watched that, I suppose. Um, to be honest, I can't believe it's got that many views. I didn't think it would. Anyway, n enough of that. We're not talking about that, we're talking about this one. See, in that video, we just sort of had a, a brief sort of look at all the British army knives that I had. Or British military knives, I should say. I'm sure I'm going to get crucified by someone for saying something wrong. I've been told off plenty of times on that video. So then, this is the knife as I, um, as I got it. I mean, obviously I've used it, so it's got wear marks on it now and scuffs and all the rest, but... Um, when I say as I got it, this is sort of what I'm referring to. I um, have to lift up my phone to show you this. The sheath is... I mean, it's, it's strong, it's sturdy, but I don't like this. That's a massive letdown for an otherwise okay sheath. Not great, not god-awful. Oh, you know what I mean? It's That could have easily been fixed. I mean, just... You could have cut off some material, that would have been easy to fix. And that would have been a pretty acceptable sheath. Now, you'll notice that this is set up to be carried on the left hand, at left hand side. A lot of people in that video told me that that's, and to be honest, I should have known. Because your 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 um, your weapon would be on your, your right hand side. And I suppose that should have been obvious, whether that be your sidearm or your rifle whatever um more important things would be on your right hand side so i suppose that makes sense for this to be on the left and although this is a military knife it is not a combat knife in fact you're probably doing yourself a disservice if you were to use it in a, a combat situation not that i'm qualified to talk about that i'm just a i've got no military experience i'm, I'm not a fighting person i just love and appreciate knives um to the point where I, I collect them as a hobby and I talk to them, I, I talk about them, <laughs> I don't talk to my knives, I talk to you about my knives, uh, I talk about knives here on YouTube, so 
even if you were to spend a hundred pound on this knife, my god, money well spent. Not that I spent anywhere near that, but even if you did spend a hundred pound, you could be quite happy with it. Now, people seem to have very mixed views on this knife. Some people absolutely love them, a lot of people hate them. I don't think there's really that much middle ground. It's one of those I love it or I hate it knives. Or I suppose you could absolutely hate it until you modify it and make it your own. And then you love it. I've seen plenty of people online doing that and that's fine. That's something that I hate doing. So I'm not gonna. So anyway, the sheath. We've got plenty of rivets, that's for sure. So there's no shortage of that. So we've got one, two, three, four, five just on the bottom alone. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I mean you've got that extra material there, so you can see where the where the knife ends. So there's no no um, concern about that coming um, too far down and puncturing puncturing the end. Um, I think proportionately this might have looked a bit better if it had another couple of rivets here. Uh, it seems to be fairly well stitched. I'm not really sure what the point in this extra rivet here is. That's something that's had me put had me puzzled for a while, perhaps just aesthetic, unless I'm missing something. Um, the biggest letdown about the sheath, obviously, is this. I mean, I could possibly deal with that, but I don't really, I don't really want to. I don't like modifying things. Um, and as in my opinion, I shouldn't really have to. Um, so yeah, that's that's obviously a big letdown. But other than that, and obviously, it's got a, a nice big loop. To, to fit a, a full size military belt through um, again I'm not really in much of a, a position to talk about anything like that so here it is here's the knife itself this is almost like a small machete at least I, I sort of call it a machete from time to time I'm, I mean I'm really a machete is a type of knife anyway I'd say but this is sort of in between a, a knife and a, a survival machete if you like that's just how I personally like to um, describe it. Um, so let's just have a look. Um, the handle, really big, chunky handle. I mean, if you're a guy with big hands, this will this will fit you comfortably. Please excuse my nails being a bit dirty. I, I don't usually do that on camera, but um, I've been busy today. I've actually been out practicing with this knife um, in the garden, trying to do a wee bit of bushcraft. So, you know, we bit, bit smoking all the rest. Um, so it's a nice, big, thick, chunky handle um, with wooden grips. Now you can get it with a different material. I'm not sure if it's plastic or just some sort of coated wood or, or what it is. But me being me, I had I had to go with the natural wood um, because I, I, I like wood, honestly. Um, I don't have a clue what kind of wood it is though. I, I still don't know what it is. And I can't even come close to guessing because it's not any wood that I've ever seen. It's probably obvious, but I don't know what it is. And it's easy to tell how this was made as well. It was obviously cut to shape on a bandsaw or something like that. And they just went over it with a with a roundover bit with a router. Or on a router table, router table even. This thing is full tang and it's pretty thick. I think that's about a quarter of an inch thick. Probably, probably more. Um, I don't know what that is in metric. The only reason I could remember what a quarter inch looks like... It's because of quarter inch screwdriver bits. That's the only the only real reason I could remember that. So I'm just going by that. Maybe not the best way of remembering, but I find it helpful. Yeah, so full tang. None of this skeletonized or rat tail tang. No, this is just one big slab of steel. Which is... You could feel it. It's chunky. And we've got three massive copper rivets securing the two halves together, which is fantastic. You know that's not going to fall apart on you. I don't know if it's like glued in there or epoxied or anything, but it really doesn't need to be. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have thought. I mean, it wouldn't be a bad thing. The more, the more strength added to it, the better. I say. Um, and of course, we've got a, a hole there for a lanyard, which this is one of those knives where it would be a really good idea to use a, a lanyard. I mean, the handle is a little bit slippy. It's it's fairly smooth. The the holes here where the pins are does kind of help improve the grip as well as this piece on the back here but this is a very heavy knife i mean when you're swinging this you could you could feel it sort of you can feel the momentum in it and it is actually good for chopping 
Um, so I think we've got a hollow ground here. I'm a hollow ground here. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I I just sort of look at the blades and assume what I th what I think they are. I probably did read what it was before I bought it, what kind of grind it is, but I don't remember and I don't really care to go back and check. But that's probably a a, a hollow ground or in fact if I'm not mistaken, is a hollow ground No, this this would be a saber grind, because if it was hollow ground, wouldn't the um the grind be away up the top? But because it's there at saber, I don't know, I'm still learning. Anyway, not perfectly made, it's a bit uneven, especially there towards the tip where you can see that, you see that right there. We do have some sort of coating, I don't know what kind of coating, don't know how they got it on there. But it does seem to help prevent it rusting, which is good. That's what it's supposed to do, and it stops it um, being shiny and shouting, Hey, look at me, I'm over here with a big shiny knife. I think that's, um, I think that's what that's for anyway. As well as giving it general protection. And we've got this guard here at the front, which I like the look of, but it's quite uncomfortable, to be honest. In fact, I'm pretty sure a lot of people just cut that off. In fact, I think a lot of people buy these to use them as a bushcraft knife and they just completely modify them. They usually tend to, to re-grind it into Scandinavian ground, a grind, which I've thought about doing many times, as well as cutting this um, completely off. And leveling the the handle scales with the with the tang i've thought about doing that but like i said i don't like modifying things i like to keep things in their original condition even if i'm using them now one thing i don't like is the way that the um the cross guard here is attached it's simply just one spot weld here and one spot weld here i remember watching some reviews on this knife um before i bought it years ago and a couple of people, I think it was one guy in the States, said that um, his just completely, it didn't come off because you, you, you can't get it off because of the handle scales. But it just came loose, the, the, the two spot welds broke and it was just wobbling around there. Now if you have a look, you can see that the um, this part of the knife here, um, basically the cross guard is wedged between this part of the knife and the uh, handle. So even if that did come loose, or even if those did spot well those can't speak even if them spot well uh, did break it's probably still not going to go anywhere now choking up like that yeah it's kind of uncomfortable and even more so doing this but then again this is obviously not a, a, a knife for delicate anything this is a heavy duty hard working knife i think there's no doubt about it i'll be amazed if you're able to break a knife like this has anyone heard of these being broken by the way? I've never heard of anyone breaking any of these. And this is one of the few knives that I'm willing to actually beat on. Um, this is one of the few knives where, I, where, where in my opinion it is okay to baton it. Um, for some reason, and I'll also bring this up for a comparison. For some reason, a lot of people in the survival community and the bushcraft community and that sort of thing like to buy these Mora knives, I mean these are about f between 10 and 15 pound depending on where you go and they think they could just beat beat on them all day just s using them to split logs, I mean I can do it but just because you can doesn't mean you should now these Moras are good, good value for their money absolutely be it for a throwaway knife or something you plan on looking after, I think these are great um, I have two of them this one I just mainly use for YouTube, doing things like this. My other one I keep in my shed uh, as a beater, but they're nice and easy to sharpen and all the rest. But see, something like this you could beat on, something like this you can't. This doesn't have a full tang, and the steel the steel on this is a lot softer anyway. I mean, let's just do a comparison there. It's easier to do it like that. Look at the, the, the difference in thickness. So if you want a knife that you could really batter, this is what you want, but it is heavy. This is this is a really heavy knife. I don't have any scales to weigh it on, but I can assure you it is heavy, and I would not want to wear this on my hip all day. I think if I ever do take it out camping or doing some bushcrafting, by the way, I have been doing, doing a wee bit bushcraft, mostly in the garden, but I had been out in the woods recently, um, just practicing fire making and that sort of thing. Um, quite enjoyed it, actually. I think if I ever was to carry this... Um, 
I would probably keep it in my bag and keep a smaller knife. In fact, I'd probably take this as a main knife. Um, I did a video on this recently, my Black Boar um, Rustic Bushcraft knife. Lovely handmade knife made here in Scotland. Um, and if I didn't already mention, this one's made in the UK, this is made in Sheffield, England. Um, I mean, it kind of, the name kind of gives that away though, doesn't it? J. Adams of Sheffield. At least I would hope that gives it away. Um, then again, then again, a few people have told me that um, that doesn't really mean much now. Apparently there's a Chinese company called Sheffield Knives. Yeah, so go figure, it's one of, one of those things. Yeah, call your company Sheffield Knives, so technically it is a Sheffield Knife. Yeah, that's, that's a dirty thing to do. It's, it's a bit like when, when you go to the supermarket for your groceries and it has the UK flag on it to make you think it's made in the UK. And then you look at the small print, made in Germany, made in um, the Netherlands or something like that. Not that there's a problem with that, I just, I'd rather buy British if I can. Um, because I don't want local manufacturing and local businesses to go out of business. Um, I'm sure someone will probably take what I just said there out of context. Um... I like German-made products. I've got plenty of German knives, and in fact, I've got knives from all over Europe. In fact, in fact, one of one of my goals in terms of knife collecting is to collect an example of a knife from all around the world. So there, there's that before someone takes me out of context, because they inevitably will. Anyway, back to this. Um, right. So one thing that I always like to look at, look at whenever I buy a knife or anything like that is the marking. It's just because I find them interesting. I like taking photos of that sort of thing. So we have a few markings here. So we've got up the top what I assume to possibly be a serial number. 1278214. Then beneath that, JA, which I assume to be J Adams. And oddly enough, 1993. That's interesting if this knife was made in 1993. Because I bought it brand new off Heine. That's the case, this knife's older than me. Um, yeah, but I bought it brand new. And one thing that I really like is that the broad, the broad arrow, which I believe is basically anything owned by the British government or was owned by the British government or some, something like that anyway. Um, a lot of A lot of military knives have them, a lot of Things used by the British Army have them. In fact, if you find the things from the First and Second World War, they often have them, have them on them as well. Here I've got. I don't. I don't know if this is a real one or not. Um, a British Army clasp knife. You can see the date there, nineteen eighty-five, with the same broad arrow, and you also see the, the broad arrow in a lot of buildings, as well. I noticed one just yesterday actually when I was out and about. Um. So yeah. So in my opinion, this is definitely worth the money. Especially what I paid for it, about 50 or 60, again, can't remember, years ago. But even now at £100, if I lost this or it got broken or stolen, would I replace it? Difficult question, because I've, I've got a lot of other knives that I could use. Um, and a lot of other knives that I'm planning on um, adding to the collection. But this is... I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with this, but... Um, this is quite different for what it is, for the money that you pay for this knife, the fact that it's made here in the UK, and yeah, it's not the best of finishes, it's not the prettiest of knives, it's heavy, it's quite clunky, the sheath is meh, I think it's worth it, even in its configuration right now, even if it is a bit uncomfortable. By the way, one thing I have heard, uh, the reason why there's that much of a difference between the um, handle scales, and the spine, uh, sorry, the tang. Why there's that much of a gap between the two is to keep your hand off the metal when it's cold. So obviously if it's really cold outside, winter or whatever, and you you have bare hands, you, last thing you want to do is put your, your hand on a cold slab of steel. And even here at room temperature, putting my hand on it, that is very cold. So I can only imagine working with this out in the winter, it would be pretty brutal, I suppose. But it does have a lot of hot spots for that reason. It would take you like 5-10 minutes with a file and some sandpaper to correct that. But again, I'm not going to. Um, right, closing, closing points, I think. 
Um, I'm not really one for fire steels. I don't quite see the point in them. It, that's not even the proper name for them actually, for a Surian mods. I'm not really one for these because I don't see the point when I could just use a lighter or a match. And I usually carry a Zippo anyway, even though I'm a non-smoker, I just I like Zippos. Um, and these are awkward. Now I know there's an argument that um, you can strike them thousands and thousands of times, but it takes so damn long to to get a fire or going with one of them. So there's that. I don't really see it as being a traditional thing either because you wouldn't have used something like this that's being man-made. You would use an actual flint or something like that. Anyway, to be honest, I don't know what I'm talking about in that regard. But this knife does throw, does throw sparks with these um, without having to modify it. So the spine, as is, you don't need to file it. In fact, there was this knife I was using to start fires with earlier on. Um, I mean, I, I've just went and said all that. I'm actually thinking I'm getting a nice one now that I know how to do it. Anyway, I should probably shut up now. How long have I been going on for? 21 minutes. Right. Right, okay. Very last thing. I'll just do... Well, I'll just measure it for you. For anyone that might be new to this. Uh, and I'll just put a couple of other common knives beside it. Uh, okay, so what we're looking at here. About 17 centimetres... About 31 centimetres overall. Handle is about roughly 13 centimetres. What's the cutting edge? Seventeen centimetres, right, I was wrong. The, the overall blade length is about 17 and a half. And one thing I actually did forget to say is this knife is a pain in the ass to sharpen. Or at least I found it to be the case. I think a lot of people have told me the reason why it's difficult to sharpen or why it feels like it's not sharp is because it's so thick, because the angle is so wide. That makes sense. Whatever, I won't get into that. Anyway, I'll just shut up now and just do a few comparisons between a few other knives. Um, this, which I can see me pairing it up with, the Blackborn knives, bushcraft knife, uh, rustic bushcraft knife. Why I chose this as a comparison, I do not know, because not many people have them, because they're handmade here in Scotland by a guy that's not that well known. Um, of course, the much more well known Mora Companion, which I think is probably one of the best knives to compare it to because this is a lot of people's first knife. Speaking of a lot of people's first knife, just for the hell of it, a 91mm Swiss Army knife. Yeah, I know it's a really stupid comparison, but I feel like it. And a lot of us are familiar with Swiss Army knives. So there, just to give you an idea of the size. And this is going to be really dumb, but screw it. <laughs> and another British Army knife, because I feel like it. Right, well, last 23 minutes, I'll just leave it at that. Thank you for watching.